Hello again. Today we'll be talking about one of my favorite topics, nonlinear dimensionality reduction. And our first method for nonlinear dimensionality reduction is kernel PCA. Kernel PCA gets its name from the use of a kernel function. A kernel function is a symmetric function such that this quantity holds true. This basically means that if you're taking linear combinations of function evaluations that the result is greater than or equal to zero and implies that the pairwise affinity matrix created by evaluations of this kernel on pairs of points defines a positive semi-definite matrix. Just to give you a little bit more intuition, kernel functions include these. Uh, one example is the linear kernel, which is just a dot product. The kernel evaluated at x and y is x transpose y. A very popularly used kernel is a Gaussian or RBF kernel. This gets its name from its similarity to the Gaussian distribution. It starts out with a distance and transforms the distance by means of this negative exponential where gamma is inversely related to the standard deviation or the bandwidth of the kernel. A polynomial kernel, similar to the linear kernel, has a dot product, but it's also shifted and exponentiated. These define affinities between data points. In other words, these kernel functions are evaluating how similar data points are, often starting from distances, like in the RBF kernel. There are actually many kernel functions that can be computed by first starting with distances. Here, remember that distances have to be positive, so they can be zero or something greater. So if the distance between two data points is zero, that means they have high similarity or high affinity. So all of these kernel functions evaluate their highest value at zero. And then they quickly drop off in a nonlinear way. So data points that are far from each other will have little to no affinity. When you have an entire matrix which contains evaluations of the kernel function pairwise, you get a positive semi-definite symmetric matrix. And you can think of this as offering a graph representation of the data. Where each data point is a vertex, there's an edge between data points that's weighted by this affinity measure. But because these are positive semi-definite matrices. They actually can be treated like the matrices we saw in PCA and classic MDS as any inner product matrix and eigen decomposed to find new data representations that preserve this affinity structure. And it turns out that these eigenvectors are directly the data projections. And they're not the axes as in PCA. To understand why, we have to get a little bit more formal about what a kernel is. A kernel is formally defined as a function that is an inner product in some other feature space. What is this other feature, feature space? Turns out we don't even have to know. There just has to exist a feature map phi that goes from the original data space to a Hilbert space where inner products are defined. And in this new space, this kernel function is simply an inner product. There's a very important result called Mercer's theorem that says any positive semi-definite matrix defines a kernel in some unknown feature space. And what's more, we don't even have to compute this new feature space. We can just eigen decompose this matrix, resting in the knowledge that it is actually an inner product matrix to find new projections of the data like we did for MDS. So this is like a nonlinear version of MDS. Here's an example of this in action. A Swiss roll is sort of the canonical data set for nonlinear dimensionality reduction. It's because the data is so coiled inside that it's hard to pick out components if you're using linear methods of projecting the data. Here we have a distance matrix, pairwise distances between points in the Swiss roll ordered 
by the coil. Here you see you have this main diagonal of points that are next to each other in similar colors, having high similarity. But you also have these sidebands, and these are created by rows of the Swiss roll and these alternating bands that pass each other. Now, when you go from distances to affinities, if you choose the correct bandwidth, for example, for your Gaussian function, you can make these side bands disappear or at least become very faint. And that's actually a good thing. That means we're honing in on what data points are actually close to which other ones in the intrinsic shape of the data, not because it's been warped or coiled a lot in high dimensional space. And that means that we can do things like clustering or visualization in a way that's faithful to data manifold distances. But you have to be really careful when you pick the bandwidth, because if you pick the wrong bandwidth, you get the distance matrix back and you will not get the advantages of this affinity computation. So basically kernel PCA can be summarized usually as the process of going from data to distances to affinities via kernel function, and then eigen decomposing the affinity matrix. There's a whole family of methods that does this, and advanced variants include Laplacian eigenmaps and diffusion maps. But today, we're going over sort of a vanilla variant of this, where you just take an affinity matrix, you eigen decompose it. Um, and here we show you the difference. Here is a 3D Swiss roll. This is PCA projection. It's completely keeping the coil in the data. So distances in this, um, in this projection are not data intrinsic distances. Here we have an RBF kernel. The RBF kernel is actually doing a better job of separating these coiled areas by spreading them out. Here we see a polynomial kernel. You can see that if you had 3D projections of these, these bands are actually sort of nicely separated so that these clusters can come out. So clusters meaning if you clustered the Swiss roll, you'd get these similar colors and similar clusters. Here's another example from Wikipedia. It's this two moons data set. In this data set, if you do a PCA projection, you get basically the same thing flattened. But a kernel PCA projection of the same dimensions completely separates the red moon from the green moon, which makes it very easy to cluster and separate in this space. Even a 1D projection does that. The 1D PCA projection completely confuses the two moons, puts them right on top of each other. But a 1D kernel PCA projection completely separates these moons into these two lines. And this is one of the key uses of nonlinear dimensionality reduction, the ability to go into the nonlinear shape of the data and separate data on the basis of those linear paths that you have. And this will allow for more data-centric clustering and separations of the data, as you will see.